Hello, and welcome to a special episode of Show and Tell. Normally I talk about knitting, but today I'm going to digress a little bit. It's no surprise that I have an interest in vintage knitwear because I have a great interest in everything vintage, including my family history. It's been five decades that I've had this interest. It all began when I was a teenager and I entered a storytelling contest. I didn't have what I thought was good enough subject matter, so I went to my grandfather, who was an immigrant to this country, and I queried him. I kind of interviewed him about his experiences coming to America, not on the ship, not on arriving at Ellis Island, but more about what led him and his brothers and his parents to come here. From then until now, I've interviewed dozens of other relatives, some more distant than others, and I've done a comprehensive family tree that includes over 600 people. But I wanted to share this photograph with you, which was taken in 1905 when the family was in Constantinople, which we now know as Istanbul, Turkey, before coming to the United States in 1911. What is so ironic to me, and what I've only come to know from using Ancestry.com and looking at census reports and ship manifests and other documents, is that my family, when they first arrived here, lived just a very, very short distance from where I currently live. Now, I did not grow up in New York. I wasn't born here. It was only through attending university here that I ended up spending four years in New York, not in this neighborhood at all. And I spent a year on the West Coast in graduate school. And when I got my first job, it happened to be in Manhattan. I took my first apartment in a neighborhood called Gramercy Park. That was back in 1976, and I have lived here ever since. Only in recent years, through more research, have I learned that my great-grandparents and my grandparents and my father all lived in essentially what's, it's not exactly my neighborhood, but it's very, very nearby, as you can see in this map. In prior episodes, I have walked you west of my apartment towards Union Square and slightly south to where the Strand Bookstore is. On another occasion, I've walked you just a little bit east of my apartment to the two little parks that you can see on this map. But today we're going to go south and east to an area that today is known as Alphabet City. I don't believe in my grandparents' time it would have been called Alphabet City, but some of the avenues have letters like Avenue A, Avenue B, and so forth, hence the name. So one at a time, we're going to hit the places that are indicated on this map. You'll recognize this from a prior episode as being my block. When we get to the corner, we're going to turn right, which is heading south, and that's a new direction I have not shown you before. I certainly could speed this up, but I'm doing it in real time because I want you to see just how short a walk it is to the very first address where my great-grandparents lived when they first arrived in New York, at least as far as I know, that was their first address. So I'm going to leave you with some music until we get to 521 East 11th, and I'll be back with you.
and I'm back. So we're approaching 521 East 11th Street and unfortunately that particular building no longer exists. There's an open space where it was. In just a second you'll see that. I was looking for the address and I overshot it, but it would have been standing in this plot. And in a moment I'll show you 519, which would be just to the left of it. This is a contemporary building, so that doesn't give you a sense for what was here. But um, that other building that you see beyond it and the buildings across the street would give you a sense of a, a short building, four or five stories, with fire escapes. In 1980, when Dino De Laurentiis was making the film Ragtime, they used East 11th Street for the film. And there's a plaque on the wall of one of these buildings to indicate that. Now you have to remember that a lot of these apartments were cold water flats. They did not have hot water. So to take a bath, many people would go to places like this, the public bathhouses, or in your kitchen you would have a small, like the equivalent of a stall shower, a small square tub that would be in the kitchen that you could stand in to bathe, and I guess you would boil up some hot water on your nearby stove. We're heading over to 617 East 11th where my great-grandfather lived in 1925. He lives someplace in between which I'll show you afterwards because it's on another street. But I'm going to speed this up and I'll meet you at the next destination. It probably would have looked more like this.
The modern building that you see here is 601 East 13th, which is where my great-grandfather lived in 1921. Uh, that's off of his declaration of intention to become a naturalized citizen. Just opposite is 604 East 13th, a building that no longer is standing, but that's where my grandfather worked in a barber shop. Subsequently, he and a partner had their own barber shop at 550 East 13th, just a block over, and I'll show you a great photograph of that. That building also has changed. Ironically, there's a barber shop in that same location today, but the structure of the buildings has been altered. Okay, once again, I'll speed it up and I'll give you a little music as we walk over to our next destination. See you over there. One more moment. I love you, honey. I love you, honey, best of all. So, baby, don't go away. Just as he went to go, it grieved the girl he saw. His words, a hard heart Oh, lonely, you're gonna miss my 
I'll go to and show him who can play this game. When her honey heard this melancholy news, why, he quickly came back home again. But when he reached the house, he found his girl had gone. So down he rushes to the train while it was pulling out. He heard his girly shout, this loving, sweet refrain.